Space Patrol! I adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Visions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are making a series of tests of the new Star Drive spaceship. The Star Drive was designed by a space traveler from another planetary system, and its principles are not thoroughly understood. At present, only Buzz and Happy can operate the amazing craft that puts the most distant stars within reach of explorers from the solar system. After they thoroughly master the Star Drive and the technique of astrogation through hyperspace, Commander Corey will train other space patrol pilots for expeditions into interstellar space. At this moment, Buzz and Happy are in Star Drive, bound for Vega, a star 26 light years from the sun. Now yeah, we're coming out of Star Drive already. Wonder how long we'll black out this time. I didn't black out completely. Just got a little dizzy. Evidently, we're getting used to the pull-in and pull-out of the star drive. Hey, Commander, that must be Vega. Wow, that white hot light. Check the instruments, Hap. Let's get a reading. Yes, sir. Well, the star is 6 million DUs distant, sir. And the radiation intensity scale reading is 9.1. That's exactly what Vega should be at that distance. Smoke a rocket. Look at that. A spaceship off our starboard. See, they're awfully close, or it's a monster. Get a viewscope reading on it, half the size, distance, and vector. Yes, sir. And if you can, find out if they're carrying armament. Yeah, that's right. We're in a strange solar system. Maybe these people don't like visitors. They're on a parallel vector, sir. And matching our velocity. Just looking us over. It's a big ship, all right. Five times the size of this one. Hey, look. They're flashing a light. Now, watch closely. See if we can detect a pattern. Three flashes. Three flashes. And another three flashes. There must be a code of some kind. I'll send the flashes exactly as they did. Three groups of three. 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 And three. Now, let's see what the next move is. Uh-oh. They're really signaling now. Flashes all over the place. They're closing in, huh? Oh, it'd feel a lot easier if we had some space weapons. Right now, that ship is so close we could blast it. Uh-oh. What's wrong with our rockets? It cut out. Oh. And our lights are dimming. Something must be wrong with the main power supply. The other is should cut in automatically, Hap. That other ship is causing the trouble. Well, even if we had space torpedoes, we couldn't fire them. Evidently, that's the idea, Hap. Those boys from Vega aren't taking any chances. Say, look now, sir. A hatch is sliding open. Mm -hmm. Something is being thrust out. It's a platform or a ramp of some kind. Something's moving. Well, it's a man in a space suit. Walking out on the ramp with both arms held out. Mm. It's a universal gesture. Showing us he isn't armed. Well, what's he doing out there? It said he wants to come aboard. You gonna let him? Right now, they're calling the planes hat. Press the outer hatch control. When his ship pulls closer, he can step into our airlock. Yes, sir. He may be unarmed, but there's something hanging from the belt of his spacesuit. Some sort of a box. Yeah, Maybe a spacer phone or a weapon. You'll find out very soon. Open the hatch. We're going to have company. A huge spaceship maneuvers alongside the Star Drive craft, and a moment later, a light flashing on the control panel tells Buzz and Happy that their visitor is in the airlock. Buzz presses a button, and the outer hatch closes. Then, at a nod from the commander, Happy opens the inner hatch, and in strides a figure in a spacesuit. Commander, what does he want? I think he wants us to talk. Jacob, well, Vedic, the brother, da. And he seems sort of pleased about the whole thing anyway. Evidently, that box is some sort of instrument that's picking up what we say. Yeah, I think he understands us. He's nodding his head. Let's identify ourselves, Hap, and use gestures. Maybe it'll help. I am Buzz Corey. I am Cadet Happy. Buzz Corey, Cadet Happy. That's the idea. Thank you. I think now we can dispense with gestures. I am Erdo, Assistant Deputy Field Agent for the Galaxy Trade Association. Well, we sure got onto our language fast. That is why I hold my high position with the association. Of course, this device here helps considerably. It is sensitive to brain waves and translates thought images into symbols of your language. An electronic translator? Yes. I've made contacts with 20 different planetary systems in the galaxy, and neither the translator or I have failed yet. I suppose you want to know why we're in the Vegas system. Or do you already know that? 
I know that, like myself, you're on a peaceful mission. And you seem to be slightly lost. You're from another part of the galaxy, aren't you? Yes. And you've never had any dealings with the Galaxy Trade Association? Never heard of it. Well, it's lucky we chanced to meet. I can let you in on a very profitable arrangement. Oh, just a minute. After we sighted you, our rocket power cut off and our lights dimmed. Oh, yes. It was a necessary precaution on our part. We couldn't identify you, and you didn't know our code, so Krexor ordered the inhibitor beam to be focused on you. As you may have noticed, some of your controls have already been restored to use. Who is Krexor? The deputy field agent for the Galaxy Association. I'm his assistant. Krexor is captain of our ship, the Charka. And you're from one of the planets in the Vega system? Oh, no. We're from Charka. A star a hundred light years from here. Vega has five planets, and they're all members of the association. There's no reason why your solar system shouldn't join up, too. Just come aboard the Charka, and Krexer will draw up the contract. Well, not so fast, or do in the first place. What's the purpose of the association? Why, to promote interstellar trade. Exchange of commodities, food, raw materials, and industrial products. All your planets do is follow the quota. We deliver materials from other planets and pick up the goods for export. Sounds fine, except for one thing. Who determines the quota? Well, it's worked out on, a, on an efficient basis. By the numbers? Or just by Charka? Corey, listen. If you tell Krexor where to find your solar system, why, after the deal is set up, you get a share of the profits. Get off this ship before I throw you off and tell Krexor to take his association and ram it into the hottest star in the galaxy. I, I couldn't tell that to Krexor. You... Dare to defy the association? You bet I do. If only my planet had been courageous enough to defy them. The association has made America a slave planet. Yeah? Then why do you work for that outfit and try to get others to join? I had to. Chaka controls everything. We'll either work for the association or starve. Hey, Commander. Kretcher's blinking up a storm. What am I going to do? I can't go back now after what I've told you. How about that inhibitor beam? Is it still on? No. No, and he figured it was safe. Prexer would cut it off. Save power. I have it going to blast away from here. What's the range of that beam? If you pull away fast, you can take Krexer off guard. Okay, happy fire rocket. Yes, sir. <laughs> Gotta have a destination to get into Star Drive. Where's this home planet of yours, this America? It's in the Radmet Solar System, 15 light years from Vega. In what direction? Come on, take a look through the nose port. Can you point it out? Let me see. That's Antares. Krexer's gaining. Uh, there's Radmet, just under Antares. About 10 degrees right. Having time for a fine adjustment of the hyperspace computer. 15 light years there, do? Yes, Corey. We're going into Star Drive. <laughs> drive from comparatively low velocity blacks out Buzz and Happy completely. When they regain their senses, the light of a yellow sun is blazing in through the nose port. As they check their instruments, Urdu calls out excitedly. It's Radmet. We made it. We made it. Okay, now which one of these planets is Amirka? That one. All right, Urdu. Nothing else to do with you but drop you off on Amirka. Prefer will be away from the city. Excellent, Kai. You can land at my brother's farm. You won't be molested. We have no spaceship since Charky imposed its quota on our planet. But one more thing, Urdu. We didn't have time to calculate the hyperspace vectors accurately. To us, this is an uncharted section of the galaxy. Unless we can feed accurate data into our star drive computer, we're lost. I can give you some astrogation charts after we land. My father wanted to be a space pilot until the association forced him into operating a farm. And this is the kind of an outfit you tried to get us to join? I I had no choice. Can't you understand? Now, I... Never mind that, Urdu. Help me get this ship into America. Following Erdu's instructions, the commander lands the spaceship on a plowed field near a crude farmhouse, several miles from the nearest city of the planet America. Buzz and Happy are waiting in the ship for Erdu to return with the promised astrogation charts looking through the open hatch toward the ramshackle building. Hey, there's Erdu. He's motioning to us. The matter, can he find those charts? Now, oh, come on, Happy. Let's see what he wants. What 
That's the trouble, Erdu. Where are the charts? There's been a slight change in plans, Corey. Oh, there has. For you, maybe, but not for us. Don't make a move, either of you. This is quite a powerful weapon. Hey, what's the big idea of pulling a gun on us? Of all the young ungrateful... Gratitude is a luxury I can't afford. Not till I am free from the power of Chaka. Not till the people of America drive out the association. What's that got to do with us? We can use your ship and your knowledge. Don't move. I'll show you what this gun can do. See that tree over there? Watch what happens. Wow. If it can do that to a tree, think what it could do to a man. Now, both of you, inside the house, make one false move and you're finished. Buzz and Abby were exploring space near the star Vega. Their star drive ship was halted by a strange craft. They were boarded by a man named Erdu, who told them of an interstellar organization called the Galaxy Trade Association and urged the commander to bring the United Planets into the agreement. When Buzz refused to consider the proposition, Erdu broke down and admitted that the commander's suspicions were correct, that the association was a ruthless combine bent upon enslaving the inhabitants of all planets in the galaxy. Blasting away from the other ship, Buzz and Happy returned Erdu to his home planet, Amirka, in the Radmus star system. After tricking them into leaving their ship, Erdu produced a powerful weapon and forced the space patrollers to a farmhouse where they're being held at gunpoint. Now look, Erdu, face facts for a minute. How do you expect to drive off the Chaka outfit with one spaceship? With one spaceship, we can capture another. Then with two, we can capture two more. With four... But our we... ship isn't armed. I know. But the factory's here on Amirka. Manufacture armament for the Charka ship. Great. With the association keeping close tab on your production, how are you going to get the weapons out of the factories? The association spies can't watch all of us all the time. Bit by bit, piece by piece, we can smuggle parts out of the plant. A while ago, you told us that the people of America had no spaceships of their own. The minute a Charka cruiser sees our ship, they're going to ask questions. My brother will know what to do. For years, he has been waiting and hoping for such an opportunity. While you've been helping the Charka gang rope in more victims, more slaves... Yes, and learning how the Charkins operate. Now I can turn that knowledge against our oppressors. Hey, what's that noise? It's my brother. His truck is coming down the road. I'm <laughs> sorry, Erdu, but here's where we leave you. Let go of that gun. <clears throat> hey, that was fast work, man. Run for the ship, quick. Here comes the truck, sir. But it's stopping. Erdu's brother probably thinks we're from Charka. He won't try to stop us. Stop them, Barbara! Commander, it's Urdu. Got his gun, but his brother may have one. Up the ladder, Hap. I doubt that they damaged the ship to stop us, even if they've got another weapon. We won't take any chances. Close port. Yes, sir. Port's closed, sir. Fire rockets. Up, ship and away. Clear of America, Commander. But we didn't get our astrogation chart. Rather than take the time to orient ourselves to this part of the galaxy, we'll return to Vega. It'll be easy to reset the star drive vector for the solar system from there. Yes, sir. Isn't that Vega? The bright star over there? Yes, Hap, that's it. Watch the vector computer. As soon as we reach a safe velocity, we'll go into star drive. A few moments later, Buzz cuts in the star drive. Then comes the now familiar silent journey through the black nothingness of hyperspace and the return to conventional rocket drive. Right now, in the region of the star Vega, Buzz and Happy focus instruments on three distant stars. The data is fed into the computer, which plots the complex hyperspace vector for the return to the solar system 26 light years away. All set, Hap? Yes, sir. Here we go, back into the star drive. And when we get back home, we can mark Vega down in the charts as a place to avoid from now on. Uh Uh-oh, what's the matter? Star drive won't take hold. The lights are dimming. Smoke and rockets, Commander, we're sunk. It's that ship again. Yes. Caught us with the inhibitor beam. All the rotten luck. We had to pop out of hyperspace right near Krexer's ship. It's probably after her, do. Yeah, he's, he's either got to let us alone or, or blast us apart. Oh, one thing sure he can't get aboard unless... Commander, I feel drowsy. Something's wrong. Uh, uh, there, in the ship. Everything's getting 
blurred. That looks quick. We've got to lock the hatch control. Before... I'll... I'll get it, sir. Silently, the star drive ship hurtles through space in free fall near Vega as a huge spacecraft draws closer. When Buzz and Happy regain consciousness, they look up to see a figure in a spacesuit standing over them. Fastened to his belt is a small black box. As the commander gets to his feet, the man in the spacesuit raises a weapon. You will regret any rash move. Stay where you are. Who are you, another salesman for the Galaxy Association? I am Cracksor, deputy field agent. What happened? Who? Uh Uh-oh. You will be all right in a moment. You were both overcome by mildly poisoned air. Poisoned air? How did it get in the ship? I focused the beam of certain cosmic rays on your hull. They penetrated the hull and ionized the air molecules. The effect is only temporary. Why don't you completely clear the atmosphere by getting out of here? Come now. This is no way to talk to your future business associate. We've talked to your assistant. We're not interested in your type of business, Crexon. Huh? By the way, where is Erdu? I know he's not aboard your ship. I looked. Where is he? He resigned from the association. No one resigned from the Galaxy Association. Oh, I assume he persuaded you to take him back to that wretched planet of his. What a fool he is. And he had such a fine future with the association. But enough of Verdu. What part of the galaxy are you from? From the free part. And it's going to stay that way. Mm, it will be to your personal advantage to help me locate your solar system. It will also benefit your planet to join the association. We've already seen some of the benefits, Crexer. No thanks. Aboard my ship, the Charka, I have some very persuasive arguments. I assume you have spacesuits aboard. You had better get into them. You will find it most uncomfortable without them when I open the airlock. All right, Crexon, we'll come aboard. But you won't make us talk. Mm, we shall see. Get your spacesuits, quickly. With Crexer holding his weapon ready, Buzz and Happy don spacesuits and walk across the ramp into the charter. Crexer forces them down a corridor and into a compartment filled with instruments and equipment of strange design. Crexer gestures that they're to raise their helmet face pieces. <sighs> This is a good sized ship, Crexer. How many men do you have aboard? That is information divulged only to association members. There are more than enough, however, to handle you two in the event you try to escape. Uh, this equipment, does it work? Or is it just to impress your clients? It all has a use. Uh, that device there, for example, will enable me to learn the location of your solar system. Once the electrodes are placed on your head... Any knowledge you possess will appear upon the screen. Well, it's like our brain is... Correct, sir. Just how gullible do you think we are? Why, you, you've already seen our translator. If it hadn't been able to detect your brain waves, we wouldn't be communicating now. This device is more powerful. It penetrates into the unconscious. Nonsense. Nonsense, is it? All right, then. If you think this machine is a fraud, you might as well... Prove it by letting me test it on you. Oh, it'll work all right, but not the way you say it will. It's some torture device. Torture device? Of course. When you attach those electrodes to us, you'll turn on a current. And keep increasing it until we either talk or pass out. So you think the device is a torture machine, do you? Yes, and you can't prove it isn't. Not I... to my satisfaction. I can prove it. That is, if you're not a complete idiot. Suppose I attach the electrodes to my own head and let you turn on any controls you want. Will that convince you? Mm, I don't know. You mean we can adjust the control? Yes, yes. Now, I got the electrodes pressed to my temples. Go to work. Personally, I think you're bluffing. We'll see. Uh, how do you turn it on? Just pull down that red lever on the far left of the panel. There. Feel anything? Of course not. Well, go on. Make your test. The machine is foolproof, fortunately. I'll, I'll hold them half. You watch the brainograph, Green. Right. Let go. Okay, Crexer. What do we do to keep your men out of the corridor and away from the airlock? You fool. Do you think I'd tell you that? No, but you're thinking it. It's on the screen. Commander, there's an image of one of the panels here, and a button is pressed four times. Which button? Think of it, Crexer. Oh. No, I won't. I've got it, sir. I know which one it is. What happens if that button's pressed four times, Crexer? What do you see, Hap? He's trying to 
clouds the screen with other thoughts, but I see a whole bunch of men lining up in formation. It's a great big compartment. Must be a midship somewhere. Good. Probably general inspection. Press that button half four times. That'll pull the men away from the escape hatch yeah. in the outer corridor. Yes, sir. Yeah. Don't press that button. Relax, crack <laughs> There's an alarm sounding, sir, all over the ship. All right, Crexer. While the crew lines up for inspection, I've got one more question. If you were our prisoner aboard this ship and you wanted to escape, what would you do? Oh. Press on the screen, Happy. An image of Crexer knocking us out and running out this door, yeah. down an empty compartment to the hatch, across the ramp, and into our ship. Thanks, Crexer. I'm finally convinced your device does read subconscious thoughts after all. Now, your suggestion for escape seems a little rough, but after all, it was your own idea. <coughs> Wow, Commander, you should have seen the stars on that Brainograd screen when you socked Krexer. Come on, Hap. I'll take Krexer's gun just in case. Let's hope that card is empty. No one's in the corridor, sir. Yeah. It's clear all the way down to the hatch. Yeah, I guess everybody's lining up for inspection. Nothing like a well-disciplined ship. Secure your helmet, Hap. I'm going to open the hatch. Boarding their ship, Buzz and Happy quickly blast off, anxiously watching the diminishing image of Krexer's craft in their rear view scope. As their acceleration increases, Buzz idly monitors the space upon receiver. Well, it doesn't look as though they're coming after us yet, sir. I guess Krexer's still out cold. Hope he stays that way until we're into star drive. We're pretty nearly up to velocity now, sir. Say, what do you expect to pick up on the space upon? Quit checking to see what frequency they use. Naturally, we couldn't understand... Can the Trade Association field ship charter to headquarters? Field Deputy Krexer here with 1201 report. Krexer? But how come he's space phoning in English? Strange. He... Wait. What's that lying on the desk at your feet? A transmitter box. In the excitement, I must have grabbed it. Two ship it drills have been conducted a spare schedule, including extra general inspection on deck five of midship. Crew, deportment, and morale excellent. Why the big fake? In reference to message 0562 broadcast earlier concerning the spaceship from an unknown origin, I have now completed interrogation of its occupants and have ordered them to depart. Is he talking about us? In my expert opinion, further contact with that solar system would not be to the best of interest of the Galaxy Trade Association. Deputy Field Agent Krexer out. Well... Hap, imagine they don't want to trade with us. Hmm, well, I don't see why not. Uh, didn't we prove that we could give them the business? <laughs> Stand by for Star Drive. Join us again next week for another thrilling adventure with Space Patrol. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. Space Patrol comes to you each week at this time through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Thank you.